Hi, we're trying a different camera angle today because I think this looks better. It's a little more personal. Anyways, so I'm so excited to review this perfume today. Um, I'm also like kind of tweaking on caffeine right now, so if I'm like all over the place, that's why. Um, that's where school puts us right now. Nevertheless, today we are reviewing Mugler Angel. Um, Eau de Bavon. Thierry Mugler Angel. Um, this perfume is incredibly popular among women who actually wear perfume and that's kind of what encouraged me to purchase this because um, I've heard a lot of hype about it and it's also kind of a hit or miss. You either love it or you hate it. So I wanted to see which one I fell into. Okay, first of all, let's just look at this beautiful bottle design. It's super cute. It's obviously like some sort of star, like crystal thing. Like this is the nozzle and you spray it from the top like that. I think it's just really cute um, and unique. The downside is that I can't really put this, like it doesn't stand up. It doesn't stand up and for some reason that bugs me so you have to either lay it flat on your perfume counter or or lean it up against something I guess that's really the only downside of this design is that it's not practical it's pretty but it's kind of wonky but I think that's part of the appeal <laughs> so <clears throat> all right let's get right into it so Mugler Angel I believe was launched in 1992. So this is kind of uh, an oldie and a goodie. So people are super familiar with this one, especially, like I said earlier, especially women who are particularly fond of fragrances and gourmand sweet fragrances, uh, particularly. It's categorized on Fragrantica as an amber vanilla, um, which is kind of true and kind of not true. Um, I was reading the notes to this and it kind of reminded me of like when you were a kid, right? And you were playing outside and it had rained the day before so there's like puddles of water everywhere and you see a puddle and you get your sister and you're like, man, let's make some nature soup and you put some fucking flowers in there, some rocks, dirt, sticks, leaves, dead bugs and you mix it all together. That's kind of what this reminded me of because the list of notes is superfluous, um, and that's not a bad thing. I personally like a lot of layers and a lot of complexity in a fragrance, but it just struck me as uh, as uh, cool. So let's get right into the notes. Oh, and I also should mention that the perfume is the winner of the Fifi Award Hall of Fame 2007. Um, so let's start with the notes and bear with me because it's quite a list. So the top notes are cotton candy, coconut, cassis, melon, jasmine, bergamot, pineapple, and mandarin orange. The middle notes are honey, red berries, blackberry, plum, apricot, peach, jasmine, orchid, caraway, nutmeg, rose, and lily of the valley. And the base is patchouli, Big emphasis on patchouli, chocolate, caramel, vanilla, tonka bean, amber, musk, and sandalwood. Um, to me, that's a lot of notes, and it's a lot of. It's quite a unique blend, but to me, it just sounded so enticing. I mean, I am a sucker for cotton candy fragrances. I mean, it is obnoxious and childish, but I love cotton candy. I love smelling like cotton candy. It's just. Ah, it's a joy of life. Um, so that excited me very much. The honey and the coconut really got my got my heart pounding, and the pineapple as well. I was excited for the patchouli, uh, chocolate, caramel, vanilla, tonka bean. All those sound amazing, and the amber is a nice touch. Um, I mean, the only thing I can wonder is, can you actually smell all of these things, or are they? just contributing to the blend? Are they just serving a purpose to balance things out? Um, I think personally the notes are kind of intended to 
make the fragrance a little more mysterious, a little more individual, and to kind of um, to kind of mute some of the super sweet stuff that's going on. Um, like it has a tad of spice in it from the caraway and the nutmeg, um, and it has some florals in there too. But since we have a lot of fruity and sweet and gourmand, and you know, you know, I'm assuming it's to balance that stuff out. Oh, that one almost came up. <laughs> Sorry. Hope you guys didn't have to hear that. Mm. Okay. <laughs> that was so gross. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do another video. <laughs> um, okay. Let's actually smell it now. So I'm wearing it today. I'm really loving it, you guys. I'm not even gonna lie. Okay. So this is the complete dry down. The patchouli is pretty much still there. Chuli, chocolate, getting the caramel, the vanilla, ambery, musky, woodsy, tonka bean. It's all there. Weirdly enough, it's all there. In really itty bitty increments. Um, I'd say the most prevalent notes at the bottom are patchouli and chocolate. Those are really like, it's a weird blend. Like you wouldn't, you know, you know, there's a lot of conception uh, misconceptions about patchouli being like gross earthy like hippie fragrance um, but I think again if used correctly it can be really nice my mom loves patchouli um, I know irrelevant but she's a nice lady um, all right let's go ahead and actually spray it uh, spray it on my skin again because it's a uh, it's been a little while so I'm gonna go ahead and do the usual Oh, come on there we go also I really like the uh, oh my gosh you can really smell it <laughs> there we go okay let's see <laughs> okay the cotton candy coconut <sighs> at first sniff you can't really tell though you're kind of like what is that you can already smell the patchouli and the chocolate as well. Those are super prevalent. You can smell the honey for sure. The honey gives, uh, the honey is naturally very floral as well as sweet. So it's a really nice uh, um, scent to use if you want something that's kind of a mixture of both. The musk tickles your nose, the tonka bean is there. It's a little bit spicy, like a tad spicy, and that's got to be the caraway and the nutmeg. Um, it's hard for my nose to pick up absolutely everything, so I'm just going to tell you what I smell. I really do smell chocolate. That's It's pretty strong. Yeah, chocolate and patchouli. Chocolate and patchouli. Um, but not like, not like raw if that makes any sense. Um, it's really perplexing because when you first smell it you wouldn't you you would think like oh chocolate patchouli cotton candy with a little bit of fucking spice but then you get to all you read the notes and you're like oh there's like there's a lot of stuff going on you can't really smell too much fruitiness. I don't really get a lot of the fruit. The coconut and the cassis are there. Whew, okay, now it's kind of going into the middle. Now we can start to smell a little bit of fruit. <sighs> this smells good. <laughs> Just right off the bat, this smells really good. And, um, and people can smell it on you too. Um, and I can always smell when somebody wears this. It's very, um, people who know fragrance know exactly what this smells like and will recognize it on somebody. Um, oh, how nice. I don't see how people can hate this. This is, this is really fun. And you know, it's not just sweet, but it has a little bit of complexity to it. It's not just pure sugar. And I think, um, I think all of the the combination of uh, notes that are happening are are all contributing in some way, whether you can smell it or not. 
I think that's kind of what makes us unique. <laughs> Let's talk about the longevity. The longevity is quite long lasting, I would say. Um, I wear a mask sometimes during the day because I have to go to school. Um, and I can, you know, I, I take it off briefly and I can smell it quite, you know, you don't, you know how you can go nose blind to a fragrance? You can kind of do that with this one, but once you, once you, once you start to smell it again, you're like, oh, people can probably smell this on me. Um, it's not as, uh, long, it's not, it's, it's not eternal as Fragranico would say, but I'd say it's long lasting, especially on your clothes. Um, the sillage is strong. Um, particularly when you first, you know, the first maybe hour or two, it's people are noticing how you smell. Uh, have not gotten any compliments on this one yet though, and that surprises me, because I wear perfume almost every day. Okay, <clears throat> in my opinion, um, this is a more feminine fragrance. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't, you know, I think, I think men could pull this off though, because it has that patchouli and it has like some other stuff that kind of makes it a little more on the masculine side, but the chocolate and the cotton candy and like all these, these little candy sweet notes that are happening are like, they make it too feminine for it to be masculine but I could see like honestly I could see a guy trying to wear this um, especially if they embrace their feminine side a little more um, the price value it's okay it's kind of on the expensive side in my opinion I am a club student so I'm always looking for bargains I think I but access the accessibility of this is pretty good like I got this at a Walgreens for like 70 $65. And this is the uh, 0.8 fluid ounces size. So that's that's kind of on the pricier side. So the value is, I'm going to say okay, because there are pricier perfumes out there. Um, but this is a good one to have in your collection. And um, I actually think this one is going to go in the permanent collection of mine. And I don't say that about a lot of fragrances. I like to kind of try things and move on to new things, but I think this one will stay and have a permanent place. She'll be my secret weapon. Um, a lot of people wear this as a signature scent um, because it is kind of, it is kind of unique. Oh, wait, we got something happening. Okay, that got strangely floral. I hope you guys can tolerate me going all over the place. Yeah, I'm smelling some rose, I'm smelling the orchid, the jasmine. Yeah, things got super floral all of a sudden. So just keep that in mind. All right, let's do a final thoughts. All right, this is definitely a love it or hate it, and I am gonna say I love it. Um, there's something complex about this that um, that's unique and that you can't really find in a lot of other fragrances. You know, when you think of a gourmand fragrance, you usually think pure sugar syrup, nauseating, you want to throw up because it's so sweet. This is quite sweet. I mean, the chocolate and the cotton candy, like, I can't think of anything sweeter to add in a fragrance. Um, but the complexities and all of the the harmony of notes that's happening really balances it out and gives it a little complexity and it really makes people like, oh, what is she wearing? It, it, it does turn heads. It does turn heads a little bit. It's not your typical hormone. Um, some people say it's gone out of fashion, um, but you know, no one will ever know. Just don't tell them what you're wearing. <laughs> Just say it's something else. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I think this is going to go in my permanent collection. This is for the girl who is daring. Or let's say the person. This is for the person who is daring and wants something delectable, but still a little bit mysterious. And that's kind of what uh, Angel is. It's, it's a classic, um, you know. 
this is this is something you buy when you're really starting to get into fragrance and you want to step into some more um i guess avant-garde kind of uh vibes so i know a couple of college students who wear this this is a this is definitely not for the mature woman this is still pretty young so just keep that in mind but it is a classic i mean this um people still wear this people still love it i know a lot of fragrance youtubers who are super into this um and now i am too <sighs> i mean i'm kind of glad i bought the full size on this one um i did that uh i i uh i bought a bunch of full size things when i uh, had more money uh so I have all these like full-size fragrances lying around that I have to use. Um, besides the fact that has, this has patchouli, which I know some people are like, ooh, patchouli. Girl, it's just a nice touch in this case. I mean, I never thought of a patchouli gourmand before in my life, but here we have it and it smells great. So I would go ahead and give uh, Terry Mugler, Mugler? Moogler, Muggler, Mugler Angel, a shot. Um, and I think that's going to be it. I really do approve of this. Okay. Well, um, thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm really banging out the perfume reviews these days. Um, I am, I'm definitely going to wear this. This is in my permanent collection. Ah, I love it. It's just so unique. Um, you know, as far as gourmands go anyway, you know, some people think of it as something like too loud, too childish, but this is super cool. All right. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next uh, review. I'm going to try something. Stay. Okay. No, I shouldn't spray it on the camera. Never mind. Bye.